Hey guys, my guy back here. So part of the reason for the uh, crazy outfit there is I'm kind of proving a point here that uh, a lot of times when we think about building our bug out bag and perfecting our bug out bag or our get home bag or our supplies at home, a lot of times we can get really caught up in the, you know, the guns, I'm going to be all hardcore, I'm going to you know, do this and the other, and we forget about some pretty simple things when it comes to uh, what we're putting in our bug out bag and what we're actually preparing for. Um, so I've actually seen a few videos before where uh, people did like the most common things left out of a bug out bag. Now I don't know where they're doing their research if they're actually going out asking some people. I've actually asked some of my uh, viewers and my Facebook followers and um, surprisingly I've heard some answers that I was uh, did not expect. I've heard that some people say that some of the most common things left out of their bags, uh, other people's bags, are weapons, which I find funny because I feel like weapons are usually the first thing people go to. Uh, medicine which I was also surprised about because I'm hoping that most people, if it's medicine, whether it's prescription medicine, allergy medicine, even as simple as a multivitamin, I'm hoping that you're already thinking about that. Um, I even heard someone say cordage, which I was thought was kind of interesting. I mean, do, do people actually forget to put cordage in their bug out bags? So once again, I thought it was kind of the first things people usually think about. Um, usually when you're thinking about building a bug out bag, you think of, I need fire, I need water, I need shelter. I need to stay dry. So this video I'm going to kind of go over, this is just more of a collaboration of uh, information that I've received as well as just information that I feel uh, is commonly oversaw. Um, sometimes just because people don't feel like it's going to be a necessity, but also sometimes just because people don't think about it. Alright, so I feel like this should actually be really common in people's bug out bags, but I've um, found out that it's really not, and that's simple bug spray. Now I keep this, I actually have several of these little pen sized ones. Um, I like them because they fit neat in my pocket. I've got another one that has a little clip so I can clip it on something, molly webbing, whatever. Um, these are usually a little bit more secure and durable for me than the, um, like the bottles and also less bulky and weighs less than a giant can. Yes, it might not be super hardcore to like, oh, you know, I'm getting all these bug bites, but you only remember that depending on where you're bugging out, there might be a situation where, you, for one, you don't want to be eaten alive, um, but number two, you want to be able to fend off against any kind of poisonous animals that might come and try to bite you. Um, obviously, this is only going to help so much, but any kind of added defense you can have, you want to do that. I will tell you with these small little pen sized ones, use sparingly. I use a DEET 100 because uh, it's going to repel the most. Um, but these will go quick, so you definitely want to use that sparingly. Another item I find interesting that a lot of people don't think about or they spend way too much money and get an alternative is a simple crowbar. Now, I like this little, I think it's like a six inch or so little Stanley crowbar. Um, there are situations where you might need to pry something. Now, they sell pry knives. There are specific knives that have a, kind of a flat pry edge, um, or you can also get... Um, I think it's called a, a parry knife or something like that, where it's got one of these kind of things in the middle of the knife blade itself for helping with like prying nails and stuff out. I like this because this was $5. One of the knives that's actually meant to be a pry knife can run you anywhere between $100 to $400. I will take a $5 small, fairly lightweight, fits right in my molly webbing on my backpack. Um, never know when you need to pry something. Um, remember to use it for legal purposes. Next item might also seem a little odd is a carabiner. Now, before you say everything, wait, I went down to my local Army Navy store and I got a bajillion carabiners. I even use carabiners for my keychain. The most common carabiners are going to be just that. They're just carabiners that all they do is they, they clip on and off. This is going to be a specific climbing weight grade, meaning this can support a human body uh, up to X amount of pounds uh, carabiner. Now, I live in Florida. I'm not going to be doing much rock climbing. I like the idea of having this little carabiner because it's super lightweight still. It's super durable. So whether if I need to use this for climbing, if I need to use this in assistance with towing something, moving something, I like to know that I have something super strong and durable that's not going to break on me. They're not super expensive, guys. They're going to be more expensive than the what I call fashion carabiners or just clip carabiners. Um, one of these will run you about mm, 8 to $10, so still not the world. Now my next item that I keep in my bug out bag, um, I find that not many people at all have thought about this and probably, I mean, call me picky, um, but if I have to go out and kill an animal or eat something that I'm not usually accustomed to eating to, survival is a mental game. I want to make it as easy as possible for me to win that mental game. I have Mrs. Dash seasoning packets as well as some sweetener. 
the reason behind this is because if you need to kill a squirrel, I don't know if you've ever eaten squirrel, um, even snake's not the tastiest thing in the world, and if you can just add a little bit of seasoning, if you're making a little snake stew or you're eating a freaking sea cucumber, if you've ever eaten one of those, you know what I mean. If you can add any little boost of something that kind of reminds you of home or reminds you of sanity, it's gonna push you a long way. Um, these things, you know, do expire, so you have to kind of rotate them, but that's just with any kind of food that you keep in your bug out bag. My next item should seem kind of like a like a duh or a no kidding, but um, through research found out that it's commonly overlooked, and that's a good knife sharpener. So we all want to bring our knives, our machetes, our tomahawks, etc. But we forget about the idea that we're going to have to sharpen those with extended use. Now, luckily, if you're just doing a 72-hour kind of, you know, get from point A to point B, probably not going to be a big deal. But if you're going to spend a month, if you're going to do a bunch of bushcraft, if whatever, you want to make sure you keep a good edge on your blade. So you can pick up one of these. Um, simple. It's got your um, carbide in your ceramic. Uh, it's got honing. It's got part where you can pull it out and do serrated edges. So it just makes it a heck of a lot easier. I'm surprised that this isn't more common in people's bug out bags because they're, they're tiny and it goes a long way. Next item is super overlooked and it doesn't have to be exactly this item. But again, when we're going back to the survival as a mental game, um, you're gonna need something for entertainment, something to kind of get your mind off of the shit that's going on. So I like in mine, I have these waterproof playing cards. I love playing me some Texas Hold'em. If you're by yourself, you can play solitaire. Uh, if you're a little bit crazy, you can do Texas Hold'em where you're pretending somebody's there. But just something, whether it's a book, a magazine, something that's lightweight and small and can keep you entertained. I know a lot of people who are uh, super religious say that they keep a Bible in their uh, bug out bag and it's the same thing. It's them putting their mind at ease, focusing on something else for a little while. That kind of push is going to help you to survive and go further. So something for entertainment, whether it's for fun, vice, or uh, religious purposes, you got to have something. Sewing kit. Sewing kit is so important and so easy. You just have a small little compact sewing kit like this. You got your scissors, your thread, your needles, everything that you need in your standard kit, and this tiny little pouch that weighs nothing. Um, I like the idea of the sewing kit. I actually used the sewing kit shortly after I bought it, and I went on a um, bug out camp trip where I basically just went on a camping trip with just my bug out bag stuff and then a tent. So sure enough, when I was going out getting firewood, I stupidly had some trash in the tent, and I came back and a raccoon had tore a hole in my tent and I live in Florida, and it rains all the fucking time. So I was like, crap, this sucks, I got this hole in my tent, I wanted to kill the raccoons, but I couldn't do that because I was in a park. Uh, but, lo and behold, I was like, thank goodness, I have my little sewing kit, and I got to it, and I sewed it up. The next item I feel like is probably one of the biggest oversights in a bug out bag, and I can understand why you wouldn't want to have it in there if you don't really understand the reason I'm saying to have it in there. Just a small, little, old school, doesn't have to be a smartphone, in fact these are a little bit better because they hold battery life better, just little, some people call them burner phone, is because with, even without having this hooked up to any kind of a cell service, I can still dial 911. People forget that the bug out situation might not be because law is all chaos, there's civil unrest, there's martial law. It could be something as simple as there's a natural disaster, you got caught in a bad spot and had to go bug out, you want somebody to be able to find you. You have a little burner phone like this where it's not actually hooked up to any kind of a uh, service, you can still dial 911 and you'll still get somebody. Now I know what you're thinking. You don't want to have a bunch of electronics in your bug out bag because how are you going to charge them if you're out in the wilderness or if you're, you know, the grid's down or whatever. Um, that's why I like having something like this. It's a little portable radio and I specifically make sure that I got one that's called an NOAA radio. This is going to be able to give you emergency weather alerts. I like that I have this set up to where if there's an emergency weather alert I can have this on standby and it's going to alert me. Uh, automatically it's gonna come on and alert me if there's something going on in my area. Hand crank, so I can charge it by doing a hand crank there, and you can see the little charging button there. Alright, so you can hand crank it, it's solar powered, which is one of the things that I love about it. It's got a flashlight on it, so in case you need to, you know, I mean you should already have a flashlight, but that's a nice little added feature. Um, it plays the regular radio, so again we go back to that entertainment purpose, um, but also what I like about it is that it's got Ports. So once this guy is charged and you're using the solar energy or the hand crank or whatever, you can then charge devices. So this is very handy to have. Now I actually keep this out um, to where I can get sunlight to it so it's constantly keeping a charge 
um, but it's right next to my bug out bag so I can just grab and go. And last but not least, another item that I feel like most people aren't typically thinking of. You keep super glue in your bug out bag because you think of all the multiple uses you can use super glue for, uh, for first aid uh, to regular gluing stuff together. Um, so again, a lot of people like to have their tools, their machetes, their tomahawks, their guns, etc. What do you do if some of the threading starts to come loose? Loctite. Loctite is small, tiny, it's the same size as a little thing of super glue, and this is going to be something that you'd want in your bug out bag when you're thinking of the mechanical aspect. Wanting to make sure that if you're having to use a firearm or a certain tool and stuff starts to get loose, you'll be able to at least tighten it back up and not have to worry about that feeling on you. So guys, I hope this brought a little bit of insight on some of the things that we sometimes just forget to put in our bug out bags. And that's why we're constantly needing to communicate as a society with each other uh, that are in this kind of lifestyle to make sure that we're not forgetting certain important things or to just share ideas. Speaking of sharing, I want your guys' comments. Please if you, let me know if you have ideas of certain things that you feel most people forget in their bug out bags or just have questions on things that you should put in your bug out bag. Comment, please like, please subscribe, uh, follow me on Facebook. And guys, as always, be prepared.